Zach Como. I had been a, a clinical instructor at the school coming in 2001, uh, instructing in the OMM department and with a, a part-time clinical practice across the street at the Bird Clinic. I found that school gave me a platform to do more with promoting uh, the osteopathic element of our practice within the profession primarily. Uh, and it, with that in mind, uh, I was able to have some time to do a bit of literature research into some of the older aspects of our profession that were still relevant and bring those forward in a number of professional articles and then in a couple of books. One of my responsibilities I felt after one of my mentors, Bob Fulford, died uh, was to present his material in a way that was faithful to how he taught and practice. And so uh, the first uh, book I wrote was called The Philosopher, Robert Fulford, D.O. and the Philosopher Physician. After that, I got into writing a, a, a string of osteo novels. I wrote a, a book called Fire on the Prairie, which was um, redigesting the life and early experiences of, of our founder, uh, Andrew Still and the first maybe 20 years of the, of the organized profession. Um, and that got me into writing a, a couple of other things, one related to what's going to happen to the profession in the future. And ironically enough, I wrote that, um, the, the frame of the novel, the scenario, is occurring during a future pandemic. And um, I kind of mirrored that uh, after the positive experience that DOs had dealing with the Spanish flu in 1917 through 19. For me, OMM is not just OMM as a, uh, uh, a specialty practice. It's actually an enhanced way of doing an physical exam in general. The integrated osteopathic approach to medicine is, boy, it gives you just a really full toolbox. Belly pain. I can palpate somebody's stomach and get some information, but I can also order an ultrasound. I can order serological lab tests. You know, I can, I can, I got the whole scope of diagnostics uh, that I can use. Uh, but they complement each other. Someone comes in and says, I need to refill my migraine medicine. Grandma's got migraines, my mom's got migraines, I got migraines. Well, an osteopathically tuned in family medicine pr practitioner. I could palpate their neck and their upper back and I'd say, here's your refill, but lay down on the table. Let me work for five minutes. And after two or three cycles of that, the patient might say, you know, I don't need my migraine medicine anymore. Uh, you know, a lot of times we do a lot of extra testing just to cover our butts, so, you know, in medicine. And with this extra information, an awful lot of time you can be much more sure that you're, you know, you're going the right direction. Not that you're relying on it exclusively, because you're not. Like I said, you've got all these other tools you can use diagnostically. You know, you can, everything everybody else uses, you've got it here. You're, but you've got you know, your, your reflective mind and your, your sensitive touch. I mean, it's just incredible how much money that this practice style saves without putting the patient at risk. And the OMM often, it's not a miracle thing, but quite often it's just the right thing for a particular problem. WVSOM is one of the, the schools that's most true to uh, teaching uh, the unique, more unique aspects of uh, osteopathic medicine and the, the current OMM staff to me has mixed skills, mixed interests and is really nice. It gives people a lot of, a lot, gives students a lot of places to latch on for commonality. The fact that James Stuckey and I came after him uh, when he was dean, planted that whole spirit of appreciating the osteopathic element in, in the medical education in general, uh, and that really stuck. And so that, I mean, that really, that whole spirit and that whole, that kind of wove itself through the curriculum, uh, there was no competition for academic recognition where, you know, you could get ahead by putting somebody else down or something like that. It was, just all cooperative and so that's a very nice uh, aspect likewise. Just made me feel at home, you know, like there was something meaningful about what I did. I, did. I mean, I had occasion to go up and uh, visit the OMM department and just climbing the stairs up to the fourth floor in the quad was just so nostalgic. It was like this feeling of we're starting another day, here we go, 
And uh, that doesn't sound very dramatic, but it was uh, kind of a recentering experience for me every day, getting back and getting back to the grind, whatever I'd been doing the day before. Yeah, it's a sense of place and, and belonging and, and having a place somewhere. I mean, I kind of customized my own office to meet my own needs and had my publication table where I'd spread out all the papers I was trying to organize and, and, uh, and such. So it was, it was a pleasant workspace. Can't do it. <laughs> it's all multifaceted. Life's complex. WSO is complex. I really can't summarize. I really haven't been able to do that. I thought about that the other day and just no way. I just can't.